Good afternoon guys from Toke, Alaska. Welcome to the vlog. I hope you are having a great day. We are having a pretty good one because we're starting our journey up to the Arctic Ocean in our uh, 4x4 Overland Expedition Truck RV, whatever the heck you want to call it. But this is going to be a grand journey and we're going to be vlogging every single day of it. But the plan is to discuss something every single day. So it's just kind of a win-win situation. Adventure and learning. A couple of items before we address the topic at hand for the day. Uh, be sure to go check out our website. Still in its soft launch phase, but getting really close to finished. www.hisandhershub.com On the website right now, just added this week, is a link to our new connected TV channel. Uh, currently available for Roku, soon to be added to Amazon Fire Stick and Apple TV, but um, you can actually watch a lot of our videos on there now. Click on the link from the website or search his and hers vlogs on your Roku Stick and subscribe to the channel. We have an extra special companion with us on this journey. This is Sitka, my mom's oldest dog, and uh, Shelby stayed home with Grandma for this trip. She's doing fabulously. Uh, we just wanted to let her rest while we have the opportunity when my mom's in town. But uh, we decided we'd bring Sitka instead and let him have an adventure with us. So tiny, downsizing, uh, trendy words, hot topics. Uh, yeah, we've kind of bought into it. You know, going from the 32 foot Class A motorhome to this 20 foot 4x4 expedition vehicle. Uh, there's a lot to be said about the space that a large RV offers when you are living extended periods of time. But for the diehard traveler, yeah, it's undeniable. The maneuverability that you have with a smaller rig is priceless. So another thing that happens is, you know, you're preparing to get on the road. You think you're gonna need all this stuff. You buy an RV capable of carrying all this stuff. You get on the road and you know what? You're not using any of that stuff. So after you spend enough period of time, you're looking around like, gosh, I'm not using this. I'm not using that. Why do I have this giant hindering vehicle? So just some food for thought. After a year in the tiny rig, we definitely feel liberated. Um, not that we didn't enjoy the big Class A, it was very comfortable compared to 13 feet of space, but we were constantly faced with roads that we were like, oh, I wish we could go down there, or weather that we're like, gee, I don't know if we should drive in that. And there is something incredibly liberating about knowing there is no road we can't traverse, and there is no weather we can't endure. Um, and that we can go on any continent, anywhere in the world, and our rig is gonna perform exceptionally. I'm pretty excited about this next one, but the traveling spirit is really starting to take hold in America. Uh, the internet has allowed people to, uh, of still of working age, to be able to travel and live on the road. Literally, we are in uncharted waters, guys, and it's exciting. But this spirit of travel, uh, very European style, may I say, because the Europeans have been utilizing vans for decades. This is definitely not a blanket statement. There's exceptions to this rule, but theoretically, smaller rigs equal less monetary output for their purchase. Of course, you can buy an incredibly luxurious Sprinter van that really hits the bank account hard. You can also find a really old 40-foot rig that you can buy for a steal. So speaking of money, I do think traveling in a uh, tiny RV is cheaper because less weight, you're going to get better fuel economy. But this is something we are very happy to start being able to do a little bit easier is we would utilize the app called Gas Buddy. And did you know by going like one, two blocks off of the freeway or the interstate, you can save like 50, 70, 80 cents per gallon? That's huge, guys. And all by just being small enough to go a couple blocks off the freeway. And we'll do a little economics lesson here, but demand drives supply. So the more people looking to get into this kind of a lifestyle, particularly in smaller vehicles, the more options you're going to find. 
Ford Transit is one now. Dodge has one. Uh, there's obviously the Sprinter van, and we've heard even that Nissan is coming out with one. If you're looking for a chassis that you can build your own on, we've been really happy with our Mitsubishi Fuso. So like Rebecca just said, the market drives innovation, and this applies to the manufacturers of all the small campers out there. You can find a very basic level of uh, small RVs all the way up to downright luxurious. And another very exciting part about a smaller vehicle is that the do-it-yourselfers. There's a whole market out there of companies providing do-it-yourself build products for these vans. It's an amazing time to be an upcoming RVer. Definitely a whole new world opens up to you when you get under 20 feet. The option to drive down a road because you know you can easily make a U-turn. Uh, pull up some of those sites on iOverlander that you've always wanted to go stay at. Uh, really the whole world opens up to you uh, by being under 20 feet makes a huge difference in where you can go and feeling comfortable and confident. Well, it's undeniable that the day-to-day -day operations in a smaller RV are just downright easier. Uh, we can either be set up or pack up camp easily in less than 15 minutes. And when it comes to finding services, uh, there's a lot more shops out there that are capable of working on a smaller vehicle and you don't need to have a 13 foot garage door to uh, find services for whatever you might be traveling in. Lastly, if you're that person looking to up the adventure level, then smaller is gonna work for you because the vehicle gets smaller, but the world gets much bigger. All right, guys, this video is a wrap. Thank you so much for riding along with us today. Uh, the trip up the Taylor is always beautiful, uh, but we have settled into Chicken Gold Camp in the little town of Chicken, Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this place has dry sites, really nice ones yeah. for 20 bucks a night. They also have electric. I'm not sure how much those are. They have a really cool cafe and yeah. store and... It's totally worth uh, stopping at. This is where you went... Gold? Gold prospecting. prospecting with dad. Yeah, he got yeah. a little gold fever yeah. here last time. We were That's here. why I've always wanted to come back, but we are on a different mission. Yeah, I think we don't have time for gold. Maybe here. on the way back, and plus the loose box is in the garage. That's true. All right, Let's guys. Go ocean, here we come. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you on the road.